Hello Immortal News family, and welcome back to our channel. In the last 24 hours we have received the somber news of the passing of extraordinary talents, and today's episode is dedicated to honoring their memory. Before we start, we kindly ask for your support. If this video or the legacies of these remarkable individuals have touched your life, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as a sign of respect and remembrance. Thank you. Number 5. Angus Mitchell, the esteemed co-owner of John Paul Mitchell Systems and a luminary in the hairstyling world, tragically passed away at the age of 53. Son of the legendary hairstylist Paul Mitchell, Angus inherited not just a business, but a legacy of creativity and innovation in hairstyling. From an early age he was immersed in the world of hairstyling, a path that he acknowledged as challenging yet fulfilling. His father's influence was profound, and Angus honed his skills not just through formal education, but also through the invaluable lessons passed down from his father. His journey in hairstyling led him to establish the Angus Mitchell Salon in Beverly Hills in 2010, a testament to his dedication and skill in the craft. His impact extended beyond the confines of his salon. He was a renowned educator, sharing his knowledge and passion for hairstyling across the globe. His contributions as a model and spokesman for Mitch, a men's line under the John Paul Mitchell Systems brand, further showcased his versatility and commitment to the industry. His accolades speak volumes of his expertise and influence. Recognized as the number one platform artist by B Magazine, honored with a day named after him in Beverly Hills, and recipient of three awards from the Alternative Hair Show, Angus's achievements are a reflection of his talent and dedication. His work with the Alternative Hair Show also highlighted his commitment to philanthropy, raising funds for leukemia research. His personal life was as rich as his professional one, marked by meaningful relationships and a loving family. His passing is not just a loss to those who knew him personally, but to the entire hairstyling community. His legacy is one of innovation, education, and a deep-seated passion for his craft. Tribute to Angus Mitchell Number 4. Peter Burkos, the Oscar-winning sound effects editor whose extraordinary work left a memorable mark on cinema. Burkos passed away at the age of 101 in Rancho Bernardo, California, leaving behind a legacy that transformed the way sound editing is perceived and appreciated in the film world. Born on August 15, 1922 in Cicero, Illinois, Burkos's journey into sound editing began with his creative pursuits in arts and radio plays. His foray into film was a blend of fortuitous timing and undeniable talent, quickly rising from a storeroom clerk to a sound editor at Universal Pictures. His career, spanning over four decades, saw him collaborate on landmark films such as Orson Welles' Touch of Evil, George Roy Hill's The Sting, and Bob Foss's Sweet Charity. Burko's groundbreaking work on The Hindenburg earned him a Special Achievement Oscar, where his ingenuity and sound creation brought the tragic tale of the Zeppelin to life. His ability to capture and recreate intricate sound details, like the creaks of the airship's frame and the engine's roar, showcased his exceptional talent and creative vision. Beyond his technical prowess, Burkos was a mentor and advocate for sound editors. His efforts as president of the Motion Picture Sound Editors led to the recognition and inclusion of sound editors in film and television academies. He fought tirelessly for on-screen and off-screen credit for sound editors, significantly impacting the industry. Peter Burkos also played a crucial role in mentoring young talents, including a 19-year-old Steven Spielberg, whom he imbued with a passion for film craftsmanship. After retiring in 1987, he continued to contribute through writing, sharing his rich experiences and insights. His legacy is not just in the memorable soundtracks of iconic films, but in the paths he paved for future sound artists. Peter Burkos leaves behind a cinematic soundscape enriched by his dedication, creativity, and passion. Tribute to Peter Burkos. Number 3. Yayu Unruh, 
a talented and esteemed Indonesian actor, passed away at the age of 60. Known for his captivating performances, Unruh left a significant mark in the world of acting. His sudden departure following a heart attack has left fans and the acting community in mourning. Unruh's career was marked by a series of powerful and diverse roles, showcasing his range and depth as an actor. His portrayal of Lieutenant General Agus Hidayat in HBO's The Last of Us is notably remembered for its intensity and realism. His performances in Night, Marlena the Murderer in Four Acts, and Possessif further solidified his reputation as a versatile actor, capable of bringing a unique presence to every character he played. Beyond his professional achievements, Unruh was a family man, leaving behind his wife Nita, his daughters Nazal Nazanya Andi Unruh and Wija Malaika Andi Unruh, and his son Fati Unruh, who follows in his father's footsteps as an actor and comedian. His family's love and respect for him were evident in the heartfelt tributes shared on social media, capturing the essence of a man loved not just for his talent but for his character. Unruh's legacy extends beyond the roles he played. He inspired many with his passion for the craft and his dedication to each performance. His journey in the acting world was not just a career, but a testament to his love for storytelling and his ability to connect with audiences. The acting community, fans, and his family will remember Unruh for his contributions to the arts, his warmth, and his enduring impact on Indonesian cinema. His memory will continue to inspire and influence future generations of actors. Tribute to Yayu Unruh. Number 2. Lillian Crombie, an Aboriginal Australian actress and dancer, passed away on January 3rd at the age of 66. Her journey from being taken from her family at the age of seven to becoming a pioneering figure in the arts is a testament to her resilience and talent. Born in 1958, Crombie was a member of the Pichanchajara people of Central Australia. Despite the early separation from her parents, she found solace and passion in dance, training in classical ballet at the Port Piri Ballet School, and later broadening her repertoire in various cultural dances. Her commitment to the art led her to the National Aboriginal and Islander Skills Development Association, and eventually to the prestigious Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater in New York City. Her career was marked by significant milestones. She was part of the first international tour of the Aboriginal Islander Dance Theater to Nigeria in 1977, where she showcased her remarkable talent on a global stage. Her performances were not just displays of artistic skill, but also powerful statements of cultural pride and heritage. In the 1980s, Crombie's involvement in the Sydney Mardi Gras and support for the LGBTQ community during the AIDS pandemic reflected her deep sense of empathy and solidarity. Her contribution to the arts extended to film, where she worked with director Baz Luhrmann and featured in the 2008 film Australia, her legacy, however, extends beyond her performances. Her founding of the Lillian Crombie Foundation demonstrated her commitment to supporting her community, particularly in times of grief and healing. Her initiatives, like the dance workshops for children and her plans for a school of dance and drama, ensured that her passion for the arts and her culture would inspire future generations. Tribute to Lillian Crombie. Today's top headlines. News 1. Françoise Bournet, the woman immortalized in the iconic photograph, The Kiss by the Hôtel de Ville, which captured the essence of Parisian romance, has passed away at the age of 93. Bournet was only 20 when she and her then-boyfriend Jacques Carteau were approached by renowned French photographer Robert Duano in 1950. Duano, working on a commission for Life magazine to showcase love in Paris, requested the young couple to pose for a photograph at a cafe. This spontaneous moment led to one of the most celebrated images of romantic love. The photograph gained immense popularity in the 1980s after being reissued as a poster 
enchanting audiences worldwide with its depiction of a candid kiss on a bustling Paris street. In 2005, Bornet auctioned a copy of the original photo, given to her by Doisneau, fetching over $160,000. The photographer Robert Doisneau had passed away in 1994, and Jacques Carteau, Bornet's former boyfriend in the photograph, had died several years prior in France. Bornet's passing marks the end of a real-life story that has been cherished globally as a symbol of love and youth. News 2 Cindy Reinhardt, affectionately known as the Queen of Soaps, for her iconic role on Como 4's Northwest Afternoon, passed away at the age of 75 following a brief battle with cancer. Reinhardt was a beloved figure in the broadcasting world, known for her vibrant personality and unique approach to covering soap operas. During her 24-year tenure on Northwest Afternoon, Reinhardt captivated audiences with her insightful commentary on up to 10 different soap operas, blending her signature sass, wit, and humor. Her segments on soap opera updates were a staple of the show, which also featured a wide range of interviews with celebrities, musicians, newsmakers, and political figures, including President Jimmy Carter, then-Senator Barack Obama, Dolly Parton, and news anchor Peter Jennings. One of Reinhardt's most cherished interviews was not with a soap star, but with the legendary news anchor and talk show host Barbara Walters. Their friendship blossomed after a personal encounter involving Walters' daughter, leading to a memorable interview in New York City, where Reinhardt skillfully drew out Walters' insights on conducting authentic interviews. News 3 Cameron Duncan a distinguished boxing manager known for his remarkable career in guiding 35 world champions, passed away at the age of 67. His family confirmed his death on social media, noting that Duncan had been battling cancer in recent years. Despite his health challenges, Duncan continued his influential role in boxing, notably promoting IBF welterweight champion Jaron Boots Ennis. Starting in the late 1980s, Duncan built an impressive roster of boxers, including the likes of undefeated unified welterweight champion Terence Crawford, former two-division champ Timothy Bradley, and the late Johnny Tapia. His keen eye for talent and sharp business acumen helped these fighters achieve significant success and lucrative earnings. Duncan's approach to management evolved over his career, especially after embracing a devout religious path. He openly acknowledged his past mistakes while highlighting his successes in ensuring his boxer's financial prosperity. News 4. René Medge, a renowned professional rally driver from France, passed away at the age of 82. Medge, born on October 23, 1941 in Montrouge, France, made a significant impact in the world of international motor racing. He began his illustrious career in 1973, participating in the Formula Renault 2.0 West European Cup, where he scored a commendable 28 points in the general classification. Throughout his career, Metje showcased his versatile driving skills across various championships. He competed in the French Super Touring Championship, FIA World Endurance Championship, World Sports Car Championship, and World Touring Car Championship. Additionally, Metje was a familiar face in the Porsche 944 Turbo Cup France, the 24 Hours of Le Mans, and the European Touring Car Championship. However, it was the Dakar Rally where Metje truly left a memorable mark. He achieved remarkable success in this grueling event, winning the rally three times in 1981, 1984, and 1986. These victories not only highlighted his exceptional driving skills, but also his resilience and endurance in one of the most challenging races in the world. News 5 David P. Gardner, a distinguished American University administrator and professor, notably served as the 15th president of the University of California, passed away on January 2nd at the age of 90. Born in Berkeley, California, Gardner's educational journey began at Brigham Young University, where he earned a bachelor's degree in political science, history, and geography in 1955. He furthered his education at the University of California, Berkeley, obtaining an MA in political science in 1959 and a PhD in higher education in 1966. Gardner's career in academia was marked by significant contributions and leadership roles. Before completing his PhD, he was appointed assistant to the chancellor at the University of California, Santa Barbara. He then held various positions at UC Berkeley and within the University of California system. In 1973, 
Gardner became the president of the University of Utah, a role he held until his return to the University of California as president in 1983. News 6, Rabbi Matis Yahu Salomon, a revered figure in the Jewish community and a prominent spiritual leader, passed away on January 2nd at the age of 86. Born in London, England, Rabbi Salomon was a distinguished scholar and public speaker, known for his profound influence on Jewish religious growth and communal issues. He served as the Mashkiach Ruchani of the Beth Medrash Govoha Yeshiva in Lakewood, New Jersey, a position that highlighted his deep commitment to spiritual mentoring and guidance. Rabbi Salomon's early education in London laid the foundation for his illustrious career. He spent 16 formative years studying under Rabbi Chaim Kaufman, who later founded the Gateshead Yeshiva Lezirim. Another significant influence in his life was Rabbi Elia Lopian, under whom he studied for a brief period. Despite the short duration, Rabbi Salomon regarded Rabbi Lopian as his main mentor. News 7. General Gordon R. Sullivan, a highly esteemed United States Army officer and the 32nd Chief of Staff of the Army, passed away at the age of 86. Born in Boston, Massachusetts, Sullivan had an illustrious military career, culminating as a senior general officer in the Army and a member of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. He played a pivotal role in transitioning the Army from its Cold War posture and briefly served as the acting Secretary of the Army under President Bill Clinton. Sullivan's military service spanned over 36 years, with key positions including the Commanding General of the 1st Infantry Division and Vice Chief of Staff of the United States Army. His contributions were honored with the dedication of the Military March Architect of Victory upon his retirement. Post-retirement, Sullivan remained active in various leadership roles. He co-authored the book Hope is Not a Method and served as the President and CEO of the Association of the United States Army. His work extended to chairing boards at Norwich University and involvement in the Marshall Legacy Institute. News 8. Keisha Nash Whitaker, former wife of acclaimed actor Forrest Whitaker, tragically passed away on December 7th at the age of 51. The cause of her death, as revealed by her death certificate, was alcoholic liver disease, compounded by acute renal failure, a potential consequence of her long-standing battle with anorexia. Nash Whitaker's struggle with anorexia and related health issues had been a prolonged one, leading to multiple hospitalizations in recent months. The couple's daughter, True Whitaker, shared a heartfelt tribute on Instagram, referring to her mother as the most beautiful woman in the world, but did not specify the cause of death. The Whitakers, who married in 1996 and have two daughters, Sonnet and True, divorced amicably in 2018. Despite the separation, they remained friends and co-parents, with Forrest Whitaker expressing respect for Nash Whitaker as a kind and outgoing individual and a devoted mother. Keisha Nash Whitaker, in addition to her acting and modeling career, was also an entrepreneur, founding a children's clothing line and a cosmetics line named Kissable Couture, her untimely passing has been a source of deep sorrow for her family and friends, with Forrest Whitaker reportedly taking her death particularly hard. News 9 David Big Jack Armstrong, a renowned Boise radio personality, passed away shortly before his 70th birthday. Best known for his deep, booming voice and dynamic presence, Armstrong was a fixture in Idaho radio, captivating listeners across several stations, including Magic 92, KF 95, Rock 97, and Cool 104. Beyond the microphone, Armstrong was celebrated for his inventive radio stunts and community engagement. He initiated several local events, such as the Northwest Motor Fest and various car shows, and was a familiar voice at regional speedways. In 2013, Armstrong's career took a turn when he purchased Oldies 1380 AM, but a stroke soon after limited his capabilities, leading to his retirement in Lewiston. Known for his competitive nature and generous heart, Armstrong's impact on Boise's radio and community life leaves a lasting legacy. His passing is mourned by listeners and colleagues alike. News 10. Herman Rauker, an acclaimed novelist and screenwriter known for his Oscar-nominated work on Summer of 42 and the provocative Watermelon Man, passed away at the age of 95. Rauker's career spanned several decades, beginning in live television and later moving into film. 
His daughter, Jenny Roucher, confirmed his death of natural causes at Stanford Hospital in Stanford, Connecticut. His notable achievements include writing for Sweet November and Can Hieronymus Merkin Ever Forget Mercy Humpy and Find True Happiness, both starring Anthony Newley. He also adapted the script for Ode to Billy Joe, a film inspired by Bobby Gentry's 1967 hit song. His work on Summer of 42, a coming-of-age story set in Nantucket, was both a critical and commercial success, with Rocker penning a best-selling book to coincide with the film's release. Watermelon Man, directed by Melvin Van Peebles, showcased Rocker's ability to address complex racial themes, featuring a white bigot who wakes up to find himself transformed into a black man. Rocker's early career included writing original dramas for network anthology shows like Studio One, Goodyear Playhouse, and The Alcoa Hour. His contributions to the entertainment industry have left a lasting impact on both film and literature. Number one. Alexis Smith, an acclaimed American visual artist known for her collage and installation works, passed away at 74 due to complications from Alzheimer's disease. Born and raised in California, Smith's childhood, spent in unique environments like a citrus grove and a mental hospital, influenced her artistic vision, which she began exploring through collages as a young girl. She later changed her name to Alexis Smith, inspired by the Hollywood actress. Her art was marked by her integration of found objects, images, and texts, reflecting on American identity and culture. Her works often drew from various sources, including pop culture, Hollywood, romance novels, and advertising, combining them in a way that highlighted the psychology and complexity of American life. Her public works, like the 560-foot-long Snake Path at UC San Diego and installations at the Los Angeles Convention Center, showcased her ability to engage with a broad audience. Smith's works have been displayed in numerous esteemed museums, including the Museum of Contemporary Art in Los Angeles and the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Her legacy includes a rich body of work that humorously and poignantly comments on the American experience. Her art, characterized by a mix of literacy and conceptual viewpoint, leaves a lasting impact on the tradition of California assemblage and contemporary art. Tribute to Alexis Smith.